Welcome to GSA Does That, the podcast that uncovers the stories behind the federal agency delivering effective and efficient government. I'm your host, Rob Trivia, and today we're discussing something that's vital for small businesses across the nation, how GSA helps small and disadvantaged businesses work with the federal government. If you're a small business owner looking to expand your horizons, you don't want to miss this episode. Together, we'll explore how GSA is not just opening doors, but actively paving the way for small businesses, including those owned by minorities, women, and veterans. GSA wants you to thrive in the competitive world of government procurement. And we'll be discussing more than contracts. We're talking about a lifeline of resources, training, and access. This podcast episode is dedicated to providing small businesses, the economic engines of America, the opportunity to access the federal marketplace and hopefully grow their companies. But how does this all work? How does a small business even begin to navigate working with the federal government? Have no fear. Joining us today is the man who runs GSA's Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization Office. His name is Exody Rowe, and he'll answer our questions and more. We'll be discussing the basic steps to getting started, to future initiatives, and everything in between. Are you ready to learn the keys to unlocking massive new growth avenues for your small business? Well then, let's get started. Welcome, Exody. Hey, before we jump into our conversation about small business, I wondered if you might share a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, and the road that took you to your current position here at GSA. Good morning, Robert. Thank you for that question. It's a uh, it's an honor to be here and to talk to you today. Um, I grew up in Stockton, California, born and raised. Um, that's in the northern part of the state, uh, about an hour uh, away from Sacramento, the uh, the state capital uh, in California. So I grew up there. I come from a large family, a lot of uh, family members who have been entrepreneurs, who have done some contracting themselves. Uh, but Stockton's a great place. It's a very diverse place. One of the most diverse places in the state of California is the 13th largest city uh, in California. And so uh, that's where I grew up. My family's still there. I like to try to go back uh, as much as I can. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah. California is a beautiful state for sure. And it sounds like you've kind of lived small business a little bit growing up. Yes, I did. Uh, and I have. And even after uh, college, uh, my first job was working for a member of Congress, uh, Congressman Jerry McNerney, uh, who represented Stockton, California as well. And one of my first kind of professional mentors, um, his name was Jim O'Neill. He was the district director at the uh, Sacramento SBA, uh, at the Small Business Administration. And so me and him used to do a lot of small business trainings together uh, in the congressional district office. And uh, he was someone who uh, was probably about 40 years my senior at that point. Um, he was close to retirement. I learned so much from him about you know small business and uh, how SBA works too in the district office as well. Sounds like a great lead up to what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about small business and GSA. And Exodia, I thought it would be good if you could just paint a picture for us on how GSA acts as a bridge between small business and government contracts. What are the key elements of GSA's role? Yeah, no, I appreciate the question and very helpful. So at Ozdebu, at the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business um, Utilization, it is our job to help uh, GSA maximize our small business um, goals and our spend. And so we advocate for small businesses we train small businesses. We host a lot of different um, online and also in-person trainings um, throughout the year where they can learn everything from how to do business with GSA uh, to how to navigate SAM to facilitating matchmaking sessions that we do where we'll kind of match a prime contractor or a large contractor uh, with the small business. And we try to do it based off of the, the NAIGS code. So they're in the relevant industries. So it's almost kind of like they're learning from um, some of the larger primes as well. And of course, the primes also have certain subcontracting metrics that they have to meet. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's a good fit. Uh, in some cases, they may work with that particular small business, but in other cases, they're just sharing information on um, how those small businesses can do company uh, business with their companies or other type of companies if they start off um, in subcontracting. Um, an interesting note, uh, Robert, most small businesses actually get their um, start in subcontracting. And so taking advantage of those subcontracting opportunities to do business with the federal government. 
it sounds like GSA is about leveling the playing field because you're championing small business, you know, and small business, what percentage of the country, the economy is small business, do you know? Uh, a, a little bit more than half. So, uh, you know, small businesses certainly create most of the jobs um, in this country. Uh, at GSA, if you look at um, uh, certainly a lot of like uh, our mass, for example, uh, a lot of it is small business. So a little bit more than half of the country's economic activity comes from small businesses. And that's why it's so important to maximize that small business spend because small businesses create a lot of the local jobs um, that we see in communities all throughout the country. That's a giant chunk, you know, over 50%. So just what does GSA do to level the playing field for small businesses so they can get their fair shot, they can get their piece of the pie? Great question. So, you know, GSA is well positioned, like we support and help create more opportunities for small and socioeconomic small businesses. However, the administration also recognizes there's more work to do to advance equity and procurement. And we're intent on leveling the playing field. It isn't about providing all small businesses the same thing. Every business does not need exactly the same thing. So if we took an equal distribution approach, it might mean that some disadvantaged businesses still won't have enough to move forward. By focusing on equity, we provide a range of training, services, and support to meet the various needs of small business owners around the country. For example, at GSA, we're implementing a post-award engagement strategy to help small disadvantaged businesses be successful in the post-award environment. One of the post-award engagement strategy goals is to increase the socioeconomic small business awards by targeted engagement. For example, our business lines are supporting socioeconomic small businesses by hosting quarterly industry days and matchmaking events that connect industry partners with federal requirements, uh, owners, and program offices around forecasted opportunities. So it's not just about GSA says, hey, this is the procedure. Good luck follow the directions. We wish you the best. It's a lot more than that, isn't it? It's a lot more. We do a lot more to kind of focus on those uh, small disadvantaged businesses and other minority uh, and small businesses and women-owned small businesses um, that need that extra support. I'm very proud that at Ozdabu, we have small business technical advisors. We have a small business technical advisor in all 11 regions of GSA. And our small business technical advisors will give dedicated, sometimes one-on-one -on -one counseling when a small business needs it to kind of help them navigate the federal procurement process as well. Um, we also host our small business technical advisors will also do um, various trainings that they offer in the various regions throughout the year as well that might be specific to a, to a particular region. For example, if there is a land port of entry, which we know PBS, the public building service, is doing a lot. Uh, there's going to be a lot of activity around land ports of entry. Depending on the region, our small business technical advisor may do a specific small business training around the opportunities around land ports of entry and some other regional opportunities. You've been talking about disadvantaged businesses. A disadvantaged business, according to GSA, is what? Small disadvantaged business is an 8A. So um, 8A firms um, are considered disadvantaged businesses, but we also have other socioeconomic um, categories as well. So women-owned small business is one. Service-disabled veteran-owned small business is a socioeconomic category. And then also um, HUBZone um, is also a socioeconomic category as well. What is HUBZone? Hub zones are areas of areas in the country where they are kind of under invested. They have historically been under invested. And so they're kind of dedicated economic zones and businesses can get certain credits for operating in some of those um, areas uh, within the country that are underserved. For example, even though they're not considered small businesses, um, a lot of uh, minority serving universities tend to be located in hub zone areas, uh, but there are a lot of hub zone areas all across the country and small businesses can, start, can get certain tax credits and benefits for operating in those hub zones to try to bring up the economic activity in those cities that uh, need it the most. I want to go back to something you mentioned. I think I heard you say one-on-one -on -one counseling help. Are you yes. telling me that the federal government care so much about small business that they'll make sure if you want to talk to somebody, almost like a consultant, how can you help me through this process? 
Are you doing that? Does GSA do that? Yes, we do. Uh, we absolutely do that very closely um, as an agency with Apex Accelerators. And the Apex Accelerators will help um, small businesses do a lot of that work as well. They'll tell them about what you know various federal agencies are buying. Um, they'll kind of do a little bit more handholding around what services and products might be a best fit for a particular agency. And so there are a lot of resources. So I always encourage small businesses to start um, with the Apex Accelerator and also with their Ozdabu office um, that they might be interested in doing business with that particular agency. So that Apex Accelerator, that's something that NASA created, it sounds like. What, what is, what's an Apex Accelerator? Help our listeners understand. Yes. The Apex Accelerators are actually funded um, by the Department of Defense. And so the Department of Defense, there's Apex Accelerators. They used to be called uh, PTAX. And so now they're called Apex Accelerators. These Apex Accelerators are located all throughout the country. There are many of them there. They're located in every region. And they really have, um, they're small business counselors and they will help uh, literally a small business with marketing. They'll help uh, go over their capability statement. They'll help a small business kind of navigate SAM.gov. Um, and so on and so forth. So if I'm a small business right now and I'm listening to this podcast, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I hope they're encouraged. They feel like, wow, they're really rooting for my success. There's support there, but I'm still, I'm really still feeling a little overwhelmed. I'm hearing a lot of acronyms. Maybe I don't understand. What's your go-to advice for a small business that just feels overwhelmed? Where do they start? Um, one of the things I like to encourage small businesses to do is we created um, about two years ago, our department created um, some small business fact sheets um, that literally can help a small business from A to Z. And we created those small business fact sheets because of the question that you just raised. We really wanted to make sure that we make it as easy as possible to do business, at least with GSA. And so these small business fact sheets can be found at gsa.gov backslash small business. So that's gsa.gov backslash small business. So I would encourage small businesses to start there, start on our website. And then we also have in all regions of GSA 1 through 11, we have the small business technical advisor where they can contact that information is on the website as well. So it tells them what the uh, who the small business technical advisor is um, and how to reach out to them. So that would be a step that I would take as well. Also, I would encourage small businesses listening to follow up um, with their Apex accelerators and um, either the Ozbu office can do that or they can kind of Google, you know, their local Apex accelerator and that information will come up as well. So those would be kind of like the entry level uh, initial steps um, that a, that I would encourage a small business to take when wanting to do business with uh, GSA or another agency within the federal government. That's helpful. Zodi, do you think there's a lot of small businesses out in the country that just they don't even want to touch this? Like. They'd be really helpful to the economy. They'd be really helpful to what the government needs to get done, but they're just a little bit afraid. Well, that's why we have these resources, Robert. You know, like that's what the Ozzabu exists for. We want to help. It's not always easy. There are resources out there um, like the Ozzabu, like the Apex Accelerator, Accelerators that are free, right? There's not too many things that are always free, but this is, this is a free service. And I encourage them, uh, small businesses, to start with, you know, the free resources and take advantage and maximize these uh, these resources. I always encourage our small businesses out there to start with the free resources first. And that's why I appreciate the opportunity today in this platform, because I wish we could tell and, and just get out to the entire country. One, the federal government is the largest buyer of goods and services in the country. And two, that there are free resources that can help those small businesses, um, you know, do business with the federal government. Every small business may not be necessarily a good fit for a particular agency. And so that's where that research will come in to uh, play. Just kind of researching one, the agency and what that agency is buying and selling you can do that by one, just kind of going, navigating that agency's website and seeing what those uh, business service lines are kind of buying and selling. Two, they can look at SAM.gov, which has all of the opportunities that are out there across the entire federal government. And then three, of course, they can work with the Apex Accelerators and or the OSBO if they know which agency that they specifically want to work with. Now, Jody, I, I definitely sense some passion in your voice and, and that you really care about yes. this. And I think that I think that is 
Outstanding. So you'd care so much. I know you want your to know that GSA is doing a good job in what they're doing. How do you measure that? Do you know you're doing a good job? Can you give us some examples of how you might measure it and maybe some maybe some notable achievements, if any, in the last several years? Yes. No, I appreciate the question. So one of the uh, ways that we kind of measure, you know, how well we're doing is the SBA scorecard. And so I'm proud to say that GSA received uh, an A on our SBA scorecard. This is actually uh, our 13th year of receiving one. And the only way that that happens is if the entire agency is committed. It's not just the small business office. It's our senior leadership. Um, it's our administrator, our deputy administrators, their commitment, our chief of staff's commitment, my commitment, our HSSOs, their commitments as well to making sure that we do everything possible um, to give small businesses an opportunity to do business with us. So that's one way. Um, the other way is in fiscal year 23, we awarded more than $3.3 billion to small and small disadvantaged businesses. That's over 50% of our eligible spend. And I know we'll build on that this year. So specifically, my team monitors spending across GSA to ensure small businesses are considered for federal contracting opportunities. We also review proposed acquisition strategies and negotiate with GSA's acquisition workforce to change their strategies when we can from full and open competition to contracts that are exclusively reserved for competition among small businesses. In some cases, we may also have opportunities for a socioeconomic program set aside when a small business set aside is the proposed acquisition strategy. Our ultimate objective is to continually maximize small business participation and performance of our GSA contracts. It's also to provide acquisition vehicles that make it easier for our federal agencies to access and utilize small and socioeconomic small businesses for their requirements. Government-wide, we're going to increase the share of contracts awarded to small disadvantaged businesses by 50% by 2025. So we're stepping up our efforts to make it easier to do business with the federal government and to lend a hand once a contract has been awarded. You know, I keep hearing about stepping up efforts and, you know, a lot of these podcasts that I do, it's really encouraging to me to be a part of GSA because I just keep hearing over and over, we're doing more. We're working harder. We're doubling down. We're really trying to serve. I think that's fantastic. You mentioned yes. earlier subcontractors, small businesses. Is that what you're talking about? Small businesses starting off as subcontractors. How does that work? Yes, and some in some cases, um, there are small businesses who get prime contracting opportunities. There are other small businesses who actually want to start off as subcontractors. One of the advantages of starting off as a subcontractor is that you don't have to do as much paperwork. Uh, so a lot of small businesses, they just don't have the resources, right, that the uh, larger businesses have. Um, and so if you're a subcontractor, you're ultimately the prime contractor is responsible to the agency and to the contracting officer um, for meeting all the regulatory requirements that occur. And so that subcontractor doesn't have to worry about all of the um, all of that that process, the regulatory requirements as much. They can kind of just do the work. And they can kind of leave some of the other uh, larger areas of regulatory requirements to the prime contractor. So, yeah, they maybe can just focus on the task at hand and not yes. have to be so overwhelmed by the process. Correct. And, and hopefully they're learning the process as a subcontractor, because I think there's some maybe some collaborations, a little bit of partnership that goes on between those really big guys and the really little guys, because they, they both need each other, don't they? They do. Yes, they do. Let me ask you this. Take us behind the uh, curtain a little bit into the decision-making room at GSA, you know, how are small business contractors being evaluated and what can make or break a proposal? Let's just get right down into it. I'll, I'll just say this, you know, every acquisition is unique um, and so are the evaluation factors. So generally it's good having relevant experience, providing the type of supplies or services being sought is usually helpful. If you don't have relevant experience with projects of similar size and complexity, it's good to start small and perform well. I will also say that you should pay close attention to the solicitation. Make sure you're providing a complete response and not missing any required information. Is that what you think a rejected proposal comes down to? Maybe some missing information. They didn't fill out the paperwork correctly, and that's why they really should get the help up front. Well, yeah, a number of uh, things. That's why I say it's best to kind of follow up with the with the contracting officer. But 
in general, it is very important to pay close attention to the solicitation proposals. And then small businesses can actually uh, follow up sometimes with the uh, contracting officer if they were not successful after, you know, after a war, they can actually follow up and get some kind of advice or information, kind of a, a debrief. So with all these efforts, it's obviously very important to the federal government to increase small business, to give them more opportunity. That's got to have something to do with just the health of the economy. GSA is doubling down. They've got these special initiatives to help the community, the economy at large. How do these efforts ripple out beyond just the immediate business world? Then how does it help just beyond that one individual or that one small business? GSA's initiatives, they have a tremendous impact on the economy. So our acquisition Position vehicles make it easier for other federal agencies to access small and socioeconomic small businesses. Projects, for example, um, that I'll refer to earlier, like our land ports and entry projects and our federal courthouse projects do so much for the local communities surrounding them. Not only do they create good jobs, they also stimulate the economy and support other businesses and the community. Um, the GSA Post Award Engagement Initiative will assist new and recent entrants to federal contract and provide them with training resources and outreach in order to um, increase their likelihood of success. These initiatives ripple beyond the business world because small businesses drive innovation and innovation is what will lead us to more sustainable products, slow down climate change and help the country operate more efficiently. Yeah, it sounds like you know, the agency knows that there's small businesses out there that we really need. We really need that that initiative, those ideas, and we want to pull that out of them. We want to make it as easy as possible for them to want to engage with the federal government so we could honestly take advantage of their expertise. Yes, we can. It sounds like you really care, like we talked about. What is it about small business, about what you do every day that just really kind of gets you up in the morning? I love the fact that small businesses are so passionate about what they do, right? Um, I love the fact that small businesses create local jobs in their communities and they hire the people within their communities. I was just at a procurement conference in uh, Alabama, in Huntsville, Alabama. This is my first time in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, I was there for twofold. One, it was a uh, partnership that we had with the Treasury Osdable Office to kind of engage in that region. And then two, uh, part of our um, HBCU initiative efforts that we also have at the agency to try to help more uh, HBCUs and minority serving institutions um, take advantage of federal procurement opportunities as well. And so while I was there, I met a uh, small business owner who started a small business, started a federal contracting small business like directly from undergrad and uh, took advantage of some great opportunities uh, within that region to do some IT work. And now I'm proud to say that, you know, 30 years later, um, that small business is one of the su most successful small businesses in that area. It's a uh, uh, minority-owned, women-owned small business, and it's uh, been successful enough for 30 years that the business owner's children are now uh, involved in the business. So that is uh, creating generational wealth and a generational impact in, in that community in Huntsville, um, Alabama, and frankly, uh, across the country. So I love it uh, when I you know get those stories, when I get a chance to connect with those small businesses to see how their lives were changed, their, their customers were changed, um, their communities were changed because of the innovation that those small businesses offer. What you're talking about there, I think, is the American dream. It's small businesses is very it much is. wrapped up in that. I'm curious about uh, initiatives going forward. I know GSA is doing doing a lot of great things. Anything we can look forward to, anything small businesses should be looking out on the horizon that, that's going to help. Yes, yes. We are excited to announce uh, Ozaboo's National Virtual Monthly Training Series. Our plan is to work with our partners in the GSA program offices, SBA, uh, the Minority Business Development Agency, and other partners to provide training on relevant and timely small business topics and information. So that'd be held once a month. For people who are interested, they can go to gsa.gov backslash um, small business to find out the details. Also, the GSA forecast of contracting opportunities tool is something that I also want to promote. The purpose of this tool is to provide a nationwide dashboard of upcoming federal contracting opportunities. It helps you learn about potential contracting opportunities early in the acquisition process, and it provides points of contact for acquisitions. Small businesses can easily sort through forecasted contracting data by agency 
location, the NIX code, contract type, and more. Small business owners can also check out our GSA forecast tool fact sheet, which explains how to use the tool and its features. Some other things that we're doing, uh, we've made improvements to uh, some of our um, fact sheets and information that we have online so they can take advantage of that. I would also encourage um, small businesses to visit acquisitiongateway.gov backslash forecast for more information um, and to see the current list of opportunities. And please note, we are uh, we recently moved to a new website, and so some areas are still under construction. Before we sign off, I just want you to picture somebody listening in their car in their commute. Maybe they're going to that small business that they own. They maybe have five or 10 employees. What's, what's the takeaway? They're not doing business with the federal government, but they think their product, their service would be an excellent fit. What is the takeaway you want them to come away from? from this podcast. The federal government is open for business and uh, the federal government's a great partner. If you're interested in doing business with GSA, please reach out to one of our small business technical advisors. You can find a list at gsa.gov um, backslash small business. I also encourage you to find your local Apex Accelerator and have conversations about your business, um, resources that are available to you and what agencies you should target. So. You can stay in contact with us um, by also looking at our GSA Twitter page. It's a great way to kind of stay in contact uh, with us in, in everything we're doing at the agency. You know, I really think this podcast has the potential of maybe changing some lives, changing some businesses. I want to thank you. Thank you for your time, Exodi. This is uh, very encouraging. It's exciting. GSA is doing a ton in small business. It's really what GSA is all about. And I want to thank you. Thank you, Robert, for the conversation and for the opportunity to uh, have this discussion today to talk about small businesses and um, GSA's very important role and how we support small businesses every day. This is good stuff. Thank you so much. As we wrap up this episode of GSA Does That, a big thanks to Exodi Rowe for his insights on GSA's small and disadvantaged business utilization program. Our conversation highlighted GSA's dedication to empowering small businesses, including those led by minorities, women, and veterans. It's encouraging to see such support. Here's to new opportunities and a level playing field for all. Thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe. We're always eager to hear from you, so feel free to drop us an email at GSA Does That at gsa.gov. I'm Rob Trubia, joined by our executive producer, Max Stempora. This episode was brought to you by the General Services Administration, Office of Strategic Communication. I hope you have a great rest of your day.